Hey, just a quick note. Throughout your career, you're going to be using data and you're going to be using all kinds of packages out there. It's nice to know that when you're using R and R packages, they're freely available and you can pretty much uh, reproduce this anytime and anywhere with any company at no cost. So I just wanted to throw that out there before we get into this lesson. And what we're going to show in this particular lesson, by we I mean me, <laughs> is uh, the Gap Finder data set and just a quick tidbit on how to um, visualize it using ggplot2. We've done some work with ggplot and deployer package, so let's continue that and we'll work with um, a really rough looking graph and turn it into something more aesthetically pleasing and usable. So. That being said, get your first R script open and let's install the gap finder. Oh, gap minder. Gap minder, let's start with the right terminology here. So gap minder, click on install. It'll take just a second to install. I already have it installed, but I, I uh, clicked it again just to show you. And then of course, if you don't have the deployer package, DPLYR, go ahead and do that as well, DPLYR. So at that point, install deployer, and let's go ahead and load those two libraries. So library deployer, and we'll run that, and library gap minder. Now before we do anything with plot, and let's just take a quick look at the data, see what we're dealing with at a very broad uh, view. So let's just go ahead and pipe the gap minder data into, remember command, command shift M, command into capital V-I-W, view, and run that. Now you can see on my screen I have country data, continent, year, life expectancy, population, and GDP percentage. So, and there's a 1,700, 1704 entries. So that's the data we're dealing with. Finally, before we start plotting, we're gonna use ggplot, like I said. So let's go ahead and install ggplot2 if you haven't already. So that's the third package we're going to want to install. And of course we'll put it up here in our library and type in ggplot2. Put a little gap in there for aesthetics. And now we can use the ggplot functions. Alright, so we want to plot this and see what kind of uh, data we can get. But we're also going to do some um, deplier within our plot. So we're going to reduce the amount of data that we're going to look at. So let's go ahead and start with um, the actual data set. So gap minder data set. We're going to pipe that into a filter. So let's filter out some data. We want to filter by GDP. For example, let's, let's actually go back and view the data so I can go back and forth. So gap minder piped into the viewer. Let's get that running. So you can see GDP percent capita. So it's a gross domestic product per capita is, is what that stands for. Um, let's go ahead and try to filter out some of these based on some criteria, random criteria. So uh, I'm going to keep that open. What we'll do is we'll pipe this into a filter. And in the filter, we'll say GDP per capita. Let's only do what's less than, say, 40,000, right? And then we're going to pipe that into something else. What are we going to pipe it into? We're going to pipe it into the actual ggplot function. So ggplot, and inside of this plot, we have to have an aesthetic. We have to tell ggplot what to apply to the x and y axis, basically. So we want our AES, our aesthetic, to be mapped. We want the x to be mapped to GDP percent capita. Then we'll have the y axis mapped to, say, life expectancy. So life expectancy. I'm hitting the tab key to autocomplete because it knows based on the on the data that I piped in, it knows that I'm using those variables or those features. So now we have an aesthetic, cool, but we still need to have a layer. So we have an x and a y axis, but we don't tell it what type of plot do you want. So let's add, so ggplot is the grammar of graphics. So we're going to add, just like the pipe operator, we're going to use the um, plus sign instead. We're going to add a geometry called geom point, and from there we hit the command enter button. If all goes well, you have a plot that looks like this on the bottom right hand side of my screen. It's a little busy, a little crazy, but that's how you get started. So now, the beauty of using ggplot is with just minor modifications, you can make this plot a lot more appealing. So we're going to walk through those next. 
The first quick example to liven this up a bit is we're gonna add uh, a, a legend and with continents. We wanna figure out, hey, which continents are these countries from? So inside of our aesthetic, we mapped, remember, we mapped, we mapped the X and Y. Now let's map a color. So we're gonna say color is equal to, and then it's gonna be the continent. And so here we go, let's run this. You'll see the colors change in a little bit. I'll even, I'm gonna leave this not zoomed in so that I can program the actual Final Cut Pro edit a lot easier. <laughs> As you can see here though, is we have Africa, Americas, Asia, we have the continents, and you can see that the life expectancy of Europe, the blue, as um, your GDP goes up, your life expectancy seems to go up. So there's a correlation possibly, right? So that's what we're looking for, things like that. So let's go a little bit further then. If you find this video helpful, you can help me back by sharing the video on social media, liking and subscribing. By sharing the video, it'll help expand my audience and grow this channel, which will motivate me to do more tutorials. I'd love to do more, but I need your help. So just go ahead and share the video and that'll definitely make my day. Thank you. So it is a little less busy. Well, it's still busy, but you can kind of see some differences between the continents now, but there's a lot of overlap. So let's get rid of that. Those. So just think about what you're trying to do to this um, overall picture. We have an X, we have a Y, we have color codes. We have. Th we, we want to change something. Let's change the actual dots themselves. So where are the dots? Well, the dots are the geom points. So inside a geom point, we can put in an alpha value. Alpha equals, and we can set that to say point, I don't know, try point two, hit command enter, and you'll see. Now, it basically depends on how much density, how dense those points are amongst the other points, it'll actually make some of them transparent. But now point two does look a little bit too um, transparent. So let's try uh, point three, five, and just go from there. Fiddle around with it, try it. So now you can kind of see where the overlaps are, but that's still a little bit mm, cluttered, clustered or cluttered. It's a little bit cluttered. Let's fix that. So we messed with the colors to give us the actual continents, but what about uh, if we want to compare like the sizes of the actual concentrations of, of population, right? So again, we have this data in here. We have population as a variable. Now you don't have to use population, but I want to see the population differences. So instead of aesthetically uh, mapping the X, Y, and the color, color to continent, we can actually add another parameter in there called size, and we set that equal to population. And you'll see various size dots now. One thing that you want to uh, also note is that I swapped the parameters and, and it's fine because I explicitly said size equals population, columns equals continent. Now if I didn't and I just typed in continent without any col equals, then you'd have some uh, issues there as well. Now we can kind of maybe possibly put a line that goes across this. So let's add a, another layer of geometry called geom smooth. And what that'll do is it'll put a best guess linear, not linear, but a line. You can see the lines now, kind of a trend line. You can see what's going on with this particular continent. It's based on a continent. And you have your population legend down here as well, which I didn't even notice before. But that's not very helpful. It's, uh, it's not aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Now, a lot of people are not going to be able to understand the equations involved with um, these sophisticated smooth geometry. So let's make that a linear model. So as if it was just a straight line. So we can add a method inside of this geom smooth and we can set that equal to LM, linear model. Now, of course, this is not going to be, uh, it's not the best linear model because the data is so skewed. So let's try to clean up that data just a little bit. Now I'm not going to get into the statistics too much, but if you do a log transform, so just take the log of the GDP percent capita inside of where the X mapped is. X aesthetic is mapped to the plot. Let's run that one more time. And it's gonna regenerate everything. And now you can see some more straight lines, which is good. So there you have it. That's a really good way to get started with creating geometries and ggplot graphics. Uh, but let's take it one step further because you know what, to me, this is still cluttered. So finally, what I wanna do is I wanna break out this this um, plot into 
different facets. So we're going to use facet wrap. So plus facet, and you've probably seen this before, facet wrap, and we want to base it off of, this is a shortcut, we can use this little tilde to say base it off of uh, what? Let's let's base it off a continent. Uh, typically, C-O-N-T-I-N-E-N-T, -E -E I don't know why I have the worst time spelling that. <laughs> and there we have it. We have uh, every continent split out with a geometry that tells you what the linear model would be based on this log transformation of the GDP percent capita. Now, if you don't want to mess with the log trans trans uh, transformation, you can get rid of it. But again, I'm going to show you the picture, and it's the linear model will not fit it very smooth. Uh, you can see how it's just see that big cluster at the very beginning. The data is very skewed. So that's why we did that. Now, if I kept the uh, method equals out of there, then we can have a better line. So it depends on what you're going for, but this is a quick way to explore some geometries with ggplot, some layers, some facet wrap, and various parameters and attributes. So, so there you have it. Then from there, you can export this if you'd like. You can export it as an image or a PDF file, copy it to a clipboard, paste it in your favorite program, but ultimately, eventually, you want to automate everything. So we don't want to use the mouse. We're going to programmatically do all that as these future tutorials go on, I hope to have all of that for you. So stick, stick around and stay tuned.